What's up guys, this is your stat attack, I can't even speak, stat attack uh, for college football. Um, I'm going to be doing a similar one like this for the NFL, it'll be a little shorter video for now, called the F-Files, so, so stay tuned for that. But today this is college football, this is all the weird wacky stats of the world. I, I'm always around this time of the year is when players get, or get closer to uh, bowl eligibility, uh, the teams get closer to bowl eligibility. The players get closer to that thousand yard mark, whether it's uh, receiving or rushing. Um, and I just have a whole bunch of random like streaks and stuff going, and things happening in the world of stats. Where well, I'm gonna go down with who's bowl eligible and who could become bowl eligible next week, and then give my predictions who I think will will be. There are some teams with a bye week, so if I go through teams that you guys know or on the cusp but that, and I don't talk about them, that means uh. And it's just the time that I skipped them for this week, uh, so because it, they're on a bye. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna start off with let's talk about the bowl eligibility stuff later. Let's let's cut out these this shit right here. You know what I'm saying? All this is good. You know, mama Jumma, it's not really everything. It's just I was doing this stuff earlier. Um, all right, Troy, nine straight league wins, third in the country behind uh, UCF and Oklahoma. I wrote it before Oklahoma lost, so actually they're second in the country. Um, they've won nine straight league games, which means conference games. They're in the Sun Belt, they've won nine straight conference games. That's a streak, they want to keep going there. Uh, quarterback Brent Stockstill, he's the quarterback for Middle Tennessee State University, the Blue Raiders. He got over 10,000 career passing yards, which puts him 24th in NCAA history. He's also thrown a touchdown pass in 28 straight games. Uh, which is the second longest active streak behind Penn State quarterback Trace McSorley at 33. So Brent Stockstill is one of the best to ever do it at, at Middle Tennessee, and one of, apparently one of you know one of the better ones to ever do it in national in uh, NCAA history. If, if he's one of only 24 people to ever hit that 10,000 yard mark, congrats to him. Uh, USF they they their running back went off last week. Their team scored 20 or more points. They actually scored 58. They almost tripled it up. Um, now they've scored 20 or more in 35 consecutive games. Uh, the record is actually 63 set in the mid-2000s by Matt Leiner and Reggie Bush and Lendell White and all those guys at USC. Um, so, you know, USF, they have a, a couple, what, three more years to potentially um, break that record. But you know what? Let's go, let's go, let's face Tulsa and see if they get it. Uh, Mississippi State, their quarterback, Nick, Nick Fitzgerald, he became the SEC career rushing leader for, for a quarterback, passing uh, the Gator legend and football legend Tim Tebow. Nick Fitzgerald, he's the number one career rushing leader for quarterback in SEC history. Good for him. Uh, Kansas is kind of a downer. They haven't won a league road game. They have not won on the road in the Big 12 in 10 years. Years. That's, that's futility at its finest, as I, would, as I should say. Uh, Washington, Miles Gaskin, running back, 50 career rushing touchdowns, puts him fifth in Pac-12 history. He's only 10 behind the record. Royce Freeman said it uh, last year for Oregon at 60. Uh, he's, a, he's a senior, but he could have 10 rushing, 10, uh, you know, 11 more rushing touchdowns this year. Uh, they, he's good enough. They're good enough at Washington. Uh, Oklahoma State running back Justice Hill has scored a touchdown in 12 straight games. That's a big 12 record, so good for him. Cincinnati, they blocked a punt last week for the first time since 2008. Like, I know they were bad last year, but they haven't been bad for 10 years. That's, uh, that's a weird one, but they, they got that taken care of, you know, done. 10 years and they're making learn how to block a punt. Temple, I've been saying this, this is just a weird one to me. Six straight now games with a non-offensive touchdown. They've done it fumble returns, interception returns, uh, block punt returns. They had a punt return for a touchdown last week. They don't Apparently, they don't need their offense out there. They can just score on defense and special teams. Uh, then you got, what else do I have down here? UNLV, this is a weird, this is, this, whatever. UNLV, they, they started another quarterback last week because their quarterback got hurt. That's the 22nd straight season that UNLV has not started the same quarterback for every game 
for a season. Think about it. Like most times, a quarterback, yeah, injuries happen, but most times the quarterback will start, especially if they're a good quarterback or even decent, they'll start every game for the year. Um, and I know some teams are are bad. You know, he has historically been pretty bad. Um, but 22 years, you like, and they've gone to bowls a couple, like two or three times in the, in that span, like. Not one of those times did, like, when they were good, did their quarterback start every game. That's, this seems weird to me, but that's one of the, whatever. All right, Florida Atlantic's Devin Singletary, the Florida Atlantic uh, running back. He just keeps doing things. He's now scored a touchdown in 19 straight games. The record is 27. He only needs eight more games to do, to, to set that record, which I don't think they'll be able to do and have to look at like what the um how many games I have left and Singletary if I'm not mistaken he's a junior so he, so he could come back but he probably won't but I'm not sure that they'll have eight games uh left this season I could actually look that up right now um all right so let's see they got one two three four they got six left if they make this CUSA championship game in a bowl that's eight so he could tie it if he keeps going and they make the CUSA title game, he very well could tie that uh, record. UCF, they just keep scoring and winning. They've won 18 straight. They've scored 30 or more in 18 straight. The record is 24. Um, they have a huge game against Memphis, but, and they're going to need 30 to beat Memphis. I'm telling you that right, right this second. Uh, Florida, they're extending their own national streak. They've now scored in 378 consecutive games, which is a NCAA record and going. It's it's continuing every time we score. Next week we play Vanderbilt. We should beat them. And as long as we score at least two points, that's all. That's all we need to extend the record. And really that's all we need to win. Our defense could shut them out. Uh, Alright, now some little... This is more like central to this season. Uh, these aren't like national, these are national things like uh, Ohio State quarterback Dwayne Haskins, he's leading the nation with 25 touchdown passes. Uh, the Florida Gators, they lead the nation so far with 11 fumbles recovered. Uh, Akron, they, they they got a guy named Alvin Davis, he, he's got the, he's tied for the National League with four interceptions though with two, two other guys. But uh, he, he's doing that over there in Akron. Uh, Georgia Tech, they're the number one rushing offense right now in the country. Uh, North Texas is a team. They both lead the nation as a team with 12 interceptions, and they have a guy, Nate Brooks, who, who's tied for the national lead with four interceptions. Michigan State right now has the number one rushing defense in the country. That Those kind of things will change throughout the, the year, so next week they might fall a little bit, but right now that's where they are. Memphis running back Daryl Henderson, he's the number one rushing leader in the country. He's already got 934 rushing yards uh, uh, as well uh, this season. All right, let's see. Temple, I said that one. Uh, San Jose State, most people don't know about this. They, they've been pretty bad, but they do have a guy named Dakari Monroe. He actually leads the nation with 12 passes defensed, and if anybody doesn't know what that is, whatever, I'm not going to tell you. No, I'm kidding. So... I almost cussed there. That would have been bad. Fuck it. Anyway, so that means he's got they combine pass the defense is interceptions combined with pass breakups. And he leads the nation with the combination. Uh, Alright, then next one. Bama's got all kinds of shit. They're tied for first nationally with 36 pass breakups. They're first nationally with 46 passes defensed. Uh, to attack of Aloha, he's tied for first nationally with completion percentage at 75.2 and 14.8 yards per attempt. That's number one right now. And the uh, Alabama is leading the nation with 56 points per game. Miami leads the nation 72 tackles for loss. That's by far the tops. They're 15 above number two. Um, ECU, little guy. Defensive lineman Nate Harvey, he leads the nation with 13 tackles for loss. Uh, this this season, I actually skipped, yeah, I skipped one. Oklahoma State, they lead the nation with 28 sacks this year, and their defensive line, lineman Jordan Jordan Brailford has eight sacks this year, so he's leading in that. 
Uh, let's see what else do I have here. Wisconsin, Jonathan Taylor, running back. He leads the nation with 169.8 rushing yards per game. Michigan right now, they're the number one pass defense and total defense in the country. Um, John Arsua, wide receiver at Hawaii. He's phenomenal. He leads the nation with 55 receptions, and he's number one with 12 touchdown receptions. He's number two in yards, but he's number one in the other things, and he could finish number one in yards. Uh, who knows? LaVisca Cheneau, the wide receiver for Colorado. He's number one in yards per reception and yards per per game receiving. He's averaging 10.2. Uh, and that, I said that in my review earlier, I think. I, I probably did, but anyway. So there's your your little trivia kind of thing. I just like, I, basically, with the NFL, I'm gonna do one called the F-Files, and it'll be the exact same. I'm gonna say, like, individual records, NFL records, there's kind of weird records that have been set recently. Um, but now I'm gonna jump into to, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just making this up off the top of my head. Um, let's go for these guys trying to get a thousand yards rushing and receiving. So my parameters for this. The NCAA record for rushing yards is 427. The NCAA records for receiving yards in a game is 405. So that's what I extended out to. I know that at the very least we, they can get those numbers. Uh, uh, it's pretty obvious. Somebody will probably break both of those, you know, someday they can be broken. Um, but that's my parameter, so I'm extending myself out. Now that's a lot for running backs, so let's just start from the bottom. Number 21, Nick Brosette at LSU. He's got 576 rushing yards so far. He's just inside that bracket. I'm not saying that they're going to get it the next game. I'm just saying those are my parameters because you could go out to whatever, right? That's, that's where I go. Uh, the next one going upwards, number 20, Karan Higdon, Michigan. He's 582. I don't think he gets the next game, but he, he's within. Malcolm Perry, he's the quarterback, running back, whatever he does at Navy, 584. Uh, Quadri Allison at Pittsburgh, 596. Going up, J.J. Taylor, running back at Arizona, 600. Jordan Cronkright at South Florida, actually. He, he had 302 rushing yards last week. He, he's at 606 right now. Alex Barnes at Kansas State, he had 250 last week. He's at 607. Uh, Nico Evans at Wyoming, he's at 612 right now. Michael Armstead at Temple, 626. Devin Singletary uh, at Florida Atlantic, 627. Scotty Phillips at Ole Miss, 637. Justice Hill at Oklahoma State, 643. AJ Dillon at Boston College, 652. Um, I, I think he might be hurt, so he might not even play next week. Michael Warren II at Cincinnati, 664. Benny Snell Jr. at Kentucky, 699. Eno Benjamin at Arizona State is at 715. Travion Williams at Texas A&M is 720. Travis Etienne at Clemson is 761. Now these top three guys, they could do it the next game. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, Wisconsin, 849. So he's only 151 rushing yards uh, a game away from 1,000. And he's averaging 170 rushing yards per game. But they face the number one defense in the country in Michigan. But we'll see if he does that. Jamar Jefferson, he's the freshman phenom at Oregon State. He's been unbelievable this year. Um, he's got 865 rushing yards so far. He could get that in his next game pretty easily. And the one, I think he's for sure going to get it next game. Daryl Henderson at Memphis. He's leading the nation 934 rushing yards. That's 66 yards away. If I'm not mistaken, he had a 66-yard touchdown run last week. So he could get that in one play. They they face UCF. UCF's defense isn't bad. They're not bad at all, actually. They're like top 20, I think, something in, in most of their stuff. But Henderson's that good. He could easily. So those, those three... You know, Mike could give it, get it. Uh, I'm not sure anybody else will get. Some some guys could get over 200 something, whatever yards. But um, I'm gonna say Henderson gets it, and uh, I'd have to see who. I think Oregon State might have a bye week, so I'd have to see who they play. So I'm gonna check that out because I got one more thing to go in with the bowl eligibility stuff. 
All right, let's see who who Oregon State plays. Now nah, they have a bye week, so he won't get it in his. And even then, they play Cal, which has a pretty good defense. So those are the running backs that are within shouting, I guess, distance of a uh, of a thousand yards rushing. Now we'll go to to wide receivers. Now all they need is four hundred and five yards, and that list is much smaller. There's only seven guys right now within four hundred and five. Starting with seven, Texas Tech, Antoine. Wesley, he's at uh, 621 yards. With as much as they passed it at Texas Tech, I don't see why he can't get 400 receiving. But Tylen Wallace, Oklahoma State, he's at 628. Marquise Brown, Oklahoma, 675. Uh, Jonathan Duhart at Old Dominion, he's at 706. LaVisca Chanel, Colorado, is at 708. John Rasua at Hawaii is at 801. And Andy Isabella, actually, at UMass, is at 839. Um, I don't think any of them actually get 1,000, because the, the closest is Andy Isabella at 161 uh, away, and he could get it. I mean, t teams of, you know, receivers have gotten well over 200 receiving yards, and as much as they pass it today, they could, but I, I just don't see that happening in the next game for it. All right, now we're going to go to this bowl eligibility. What's that sound? Cincinnati, they became bowl eligible this week. They they won six games. They're six and zero. They just got ranked. They's undefeated, and they is going to go to bowl game. Uh, the next one, Clemson, they got bowl eligible this week as well. Uh, Ohio State got it. Notre Dame got it. Georgia got it. And Alabama got it. Oklahoma did not become bowl eligible yet. They lost. Uh, Kentucky did not become bowl eligible yet. They lost. LSU lost and is not bowl eligible yet. Now, that being said, let's start this off with your LSU Tigers. They play next week against Georgia. I actually picked LSU to upset them, so I think LSU becomes bowl eligible. Uh, Kentucky, I accidentally got rid of them. I should go get it back, I guess. But I think UCF... While well, I get that, UCF, they play Memphis. Oh, man, that's going to be a really, really interesting game. Uh, I think UCF should win. I think they have... I, they're so even. Both teams are so, so even. It, I broke it down in our previews. If you break it down, they're so even. But I think UCF does get the win. And they will become bowl eligible. Oh, yeah. I got rid of Kentucky because they have a bye week. All right, UCF, so I think they will become bowl eligible. Um, USF plays Tulsa. I think they, they Tulsa will be tough, but they should become bowl eligible this weekend. The Miami Hurricanes taking on the Virginia Cavaliers. I think they become bowl eligible this weekend. West Virginia, they play... Uh, Iowa State, that'll be tough, but they'll get bowl eligible. Texas takes on Baylor. I picked Baylor for the upset, so I'm going to say Texas did not become bowl eligible. And by the way, bowl eligibility, I probably should have explained this. That's uh, Most teams have 12 games. There's like three teams in the country, usually Hawaii. There's something called the Hawaii exemption, where they play 13 games and people traveling that travel to Hawaii to play them. They're allowed to either schedule an extra bye week or schedule a 13th game. It's, and it's to recoup the uh, revenue from all the traveling costs. Um, but otherwise, every other team plays 12 regular season games. So you have to win, get to at least six wins. So Texas, they're at five. I think they get upset and don't make it. Michigan, they face Wisconsin. I think I, I picked Wisconsin. So I, I think Michigan does not become bowl eligible. Buffalo Bulls, one of the surprise, nice Stories of the year, they're 5-1, they face Akron, I think they should win and, and actually become ball eligible there. Uh, the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, they go to BYU, that'll be tough. Their quarterback's hurt, but I, I think they'll get it, and they'll get to... They actually needed seven wins, they're 6-1 and one right now. Uh, I think they will become ball eligible. Uh, Washington Huskies take on the Oregon Ducks. I picked Oregon to win, so I think Washington will not become ball eligible this week. Uh, Colorado Buffalo is taking on USC. I picked Colorado to win, so I think Colorado will become bowl eligible. Florida Gators going to Vanderbilt. Uh, they should have two McVanderbilt. Okay, sometimes our defense is really good. Hopefully we don't have a letdown after the huge win last week, but I think 
the Gators will get that sixth win and become bowl eligible. And the last one, the Troy Tro get Trojans out of the Sun Belt. They're five and one. They're facing Liberty. That could be a bit of a it could be an upset there, but I think Troy would take care of that business and become bowl eligible with that. All right, go watch my other videos. Subscribe, share everything. I'm gonna do a shorter video in a little bit for the NFL folks called the F Files. Peace.